Okay, so we've already gone through and created the correct templates to do the monitoring. As you've seen, we've created the, the server-side monitoring of the DinnerNow application. Um, outside of that, I've also created a template for the client side for what I'm monitoring in the browser. Simple same walkthrough, answering a couple of questions, as well as for the service. And what that ends up giving me are these views into the application. Here's the DinnerNow application. Um, the state summary view of the server side. You can see that I've got uh, Dinner Now shopping cart, which I added as a transaction, and I've added the Dinner Now search. And those are already being monitored, but what I did was I selected a different alerting level for those particular ones that I care about. You can see the, they're coming in. We're starting to collect some data from them. I've got some synthetic transactions in the back doing some things. So at this point, Everything's being collected, translated, and brought back in, looking at it from the aspect of either an event or an alert. Operations manager is going to care about both of them, make state changes based on what we're seeing, change these states back. Let's look at the application and walk through an example. So from the end user's perspective, I'm going to interact with the application just like any end user would normally do with this type of application. I'm doing a quick search, trying to find something that I really wanted or care about. I'm going to continue the process, and I'm going to try to make a purchase by adding something to my shopping cart. I don't know if you noticed, but in the lower left-hand side, you see here that we've got an error from actually trying to make that purchase. Normal users would make change what they're going to purchase, move on, leave, make a phone call, send an email, but reality is we've collected already what's going on in the background. What is actually the user's perspective of the problem? So if I go back to what we're looking at inside Ops Manager, Ops Manager is going to translate some of that data into different things. The first thing we'll, we'll actually get a rendering of, uh, because of the synthetic transactions I've got going on, is that Right now, the Dinner Now search page is unhealthy. Shopping cart page on the server side seems to still be healthy. If I go down to the client's perspective, and again, these would all bubble up usually in a single diagram. I'm just showing individual components now. I'll look at the state summary. And in this particular instance, I'm actually going to see that I've got some alerts that have come in, some events that have populated based on either slow response time, according to some of them, um, looks like uh, some Ajax calls that are responding slowly. What we'll do is we'll, we'll go back out and we'll look at what does this actually bubble up to the different kind of perspectives. So from the aspect of uh, being on the operational side, I'm being told severity, I'm being told when, um, how critical it is. For example, Here's that critical alert that came in saying that the search page failed with a client-side exception. So I could go into that, look at that alert, and see that searching seems to be having a, an error actually trying to make a purchase. And I could go into a deeper dive of this simply by clicking on the, the link. It'll take me right into the, the view of this information. And it says the client-side exception took place, that the percentage is undefined. And if I look, I actually have collected some information about that. Right. So if I copy and paste this into the URL, I can recreate this and see exactly what was taking place. I can look at some of the, the information collected from the end user, for example, user's name if they had to log in at that point, browser they were using, some of the capabilities they were using. This is all from the client's browser. This is information we're collecting. The JavaScript failure was in the browser, and we're bubbling that back up. At this moment in time, I'd probably care about what other related events are happening in a correlation of time. Maybe I'll correlate it in a five-minute window. Anything else happening that's related to JavaScript failures? So it helps me understand the severity. I can look at that particular JavaScript failure and see how many times it's happened in a number of days. So here I'm looking at roughly two weeks and I've had the same failure happen twice. Again, triaging and severity 
it's helping me understand exactly uh, what should I do with response to this. Now, normally we would connect into other mechanisms like Team Foundation Server, create work items, maybe some trouble ticketing systems, create some support mechanisms there. Let's look at that, that entire transaction maybe from a different view, right? If I go back to what typical use case is, the developer would come in to diagnose the problem further once they get the alert. So the alert's going to be transactional in nature. It's going to highlight the fact that search was slow or, or um, in some cases, logging in, sign in, whatever these, these individual transactions are. And then I'll come over to the individualized view that I'm used to for a developer, which is just logging individual events. And I can see that I'm capturing some events, in particular some client side. I can filter that based on the user that called and complained. I can filter it based on the application that I care about. And in this particular case, what I might do is just quickly group them together and tell me what's happening the most in the most recent time period. So quickly, I see out of all those different events I collected, there are only 15 problems. And in particular, I can see that that search page was slow. So if I drill into that, I'm looking at a slow search, and I'm actually monitoring that entire transaction. So I see that the slow search in the browser was actually caused by a slow search on the client side. I mean, on the server side in this particular case. So the client's caused by the server. Sometimes it's not. Client might be caused by network traffic. You can see we're monitoring how long it took for the request to get back to the server. You can see we're monitoring how long the server took to respond. The document object model ready state. Actually an event switch that says that the document object model is ready. Downloading additional peripherals. You can see the entire, entire timeline. In this particular example, it said that the server was the slowest. You saw it was the largest amount of time and I captured that event in the server, which allows me to drill down into that event. Now, this is a default configuration. I didn't go in and make any changes to the depth. This is what you would normally get if you actually just simply turned on monitoring. So I'm able to see that there was a SQL call that took longer than I set for a sensitivity level and two WCF calls. So I'm talking to two other web services. Now, again, I'm looking at the page being built on the server and if I go to my distributed chain, I'm going to go down further and see that it talked to two other services. So this is the reality of that entire distributed chain. That entire single transaction walked from the client's perspective all the way back into two web services that are making the, the request happen. The slowest one being highlighted, I can select into that. And I can see why was it slow. Main reason is... Link was creating the SQL. SQL statement waited 1,690 milliseconds. So I stepped through the entire transaction that that user experienced. And at each stage, I'm able to look at why was that particular component or piece of that transaction slow. It might have stopped. For example, if I look at the distributed chain, I might have stopped here and not actually received events here. It depends on what I've configured to collect data on. So those are the interesting points, right? We'll, we'll monitor them, we'll average them, we'll understand them, and then you set those points as into when do we want to have data to diagnose? When is it considered a broken SLA? If I go back to my actual application load, I could see that the Dinner Now applications had 48 requests in the last hour, and it's averaging a little over two and a half seconds to respond to each one. This is a good example of what would I set dinner now to respond to. I might set dinner now to respond to two seconds or two and a half seconds and collect data above that. And then if you look, the client's perspective, there's only been 12 requests that have been monitored and collected data. And it's kind of interesting. We're not sending every single request back. We're only looking at the unhealthy ones. So you almost always have a one-to-one -one relationship with the number of requests and the number one of performance events. We have statistical monitoring where we can collect every event, average it out, but then we don't collect the depth because that's a large amount of information we're trying to collect. And we can drill down into these and keep in mind that we're discovering the application as we walk through creating the template. 
We're discovering the application's dependencies based on monitoring the different pieces of it and connecting those pieces up as we collect them. And then we're also discovering the dependencies even if those aren't monitored components. So when I'm looking at the dinner now application, I know it's talking to those two WCF services. In, in some cases, I may not collect data from them. Here I did collect some events, but what I'm doing is I'm looking at dinner now makes a call to a web service. So I'm going to collect that event or at least collect that detail that it is a dependency. Here's an example of the actual dinner now membership database hasn't been part of any event, but I do know that there is a dependency on that database. So I submitted that information in, and now I know there's a dependency. Actually, a dependency on two. I can create, based on the collected events, topologies of those. So I know the Dinner Now client relies on the Dinner Now service, and this is independent of number of servers. And then I know how many services that, that I depend on. So one service, which the dinner now client side depends on. I can look at the computers that's deployed to. Dinner now could be on several hundred computers. Obviously, in this virtual machine, I'm only on one. I have the ability to see how many events I've collected and the averages. What does that look like? And then the trends over time, I can correlate. Some of the other things that we're doing is we're collecting the information about what you have set for service levels. For example, if you go into the search page, you'll notice that I'm individually collecting the number of searches that are done, the average response times of those, and any specific unhealthy events that come back in. So those all bubble up. And again, these can be created into overall distributed application diagrams. We are individual creating diagrams for each one that you're adding and showing the, the health state of those. They all certainly can be connected. And in the larger picture, you'll actually connect them in with, for example, network devices or other, other components that are dependent, or at least this application depends on. So I just wanted to make sure that that was a quick overview. I wasn't really trying to get into a lot of detail of what does this underneath the covers or what causes this to happen. Just wanted to show a real quick walkthrough of, of how easy it is to set up and what kind of information we collect and how we connect that information together as a set of transactions across the environment.